Hello everybody! No, we're not going back to 2019, but we are, aren't we, when we see this? It is dated the 28th of May 2024. Look what it says. UK households warned to stock up on seven items from Tesco's, Lidl, Aldi and Asda immediately. The government is urging Brits to prepare for emergencies by stocking up on essential items including tinned meat, bottled wipes and wet wipes as well as tin openers and batteries. I just find this incredible that the news is telling us, well on the internet, on Google, but these companies should be putting these messages out themselves. But they haven't and they've now told us to stock up again like 2019. That is incredible. I don't think our shelves have ever quite been the same to be honest since when they did it before a lot of people are saying that that their shelves are not full anymore anyway Brits have been urged to stockpile seven items with supermarkets like Asda, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Tesco's and Lidl's and Aldi being the go to foot to places for these essentials the government's prepare website has issued a call for the public to be ready for an emergency an emergency for God's sake by having a stash of necessities such as tinned meat and bottled water the site specifically recommends keeping a supply of bottled water on hand advising at least three litres per person each day but ideally about 10 litres for added comfort to cover cooking and hygiene needs and reports. Birmingham Live. Now is this just Birmingham or is this the whole country? It says Birmingham Live. But all those companies, come on, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so what's your thoughts on that then? Anyway, it also suggests keeping non-essential foods, stocking up on non-essential foods and items that don't require cooking. What are they heading us for? Including tinned meats, vegetables and fruits. A tin opener takes the fifth spot on the list followed by batteries and wipes. Additionally, households with pets or infants should ensure they have adequate supply of, adequate supply of pet food and baby food. For God's sake. Well, as I said, Oliver Doughton, who can forget the, the supermarket shelves and the days of the plan Ademic? He probed further, and how many of us have now acted, so we'd better be prepared if it happened again. So they don't know if it's going to happen, he says, if it happened again. If there was a national power outage, how many of us have torches and batteries? So why are they telling us to get ready for that? He continued, if we went off, how many of us have bottles of water stored? This new advice comes in the wake of a survey conducted by the London Defence Conference, which revealed that over 40% of people lack enough supplies to last even three days. The words are, I can assure you that we've got plenty of resilience in the cupboards and we've got some water in the shed. So is it happening? Isn't it happening? Is it Birmingham? Is it the country? Why are they telling us to do that? Why do we have to go back as if we're at war? I put this video out yesterday, obviously warning us to stock up on items, but I mean, if hardly any of them are in the shops, then how can we stock up on things? What, we're just supposed to live on rice and pasta and it's all sort of third world country. But anyway, down there, Put, put in what Google have said about products, so I did. So for 2024, so they made this in 2023, they're showing us that there's going to be loads of things which are going to be more scarce on the shops. But what I feel is if they are harping us all the time and doing all these other things, then um, it's going to make crops. I mean, we've had um, Dubai, haven't we, with all that flooding because of them seeding the skies and causing weather fronts and weather things to change and put water where it's not. And just trying to change everywhere. I mean, 
Look at it all. Look at all the things that we're going to be short of, which they were telling you for 2024. I mean, we have talked about it off and on for years that there'd be a food shortage, but it's something that they are doing. They just seem to be at war with the people. We've got to make the people's life as miserable as possible. All I can see now is the Labour leader talking and I'm thinking, what the hell do you want to listen to, for him, to him for? He's got the same boss as the other ones. They're in the same system with the Raymonds. Look at it. It's just, there's just so much shortage. There's problems with most things now. Spices. Dog food. Chicken eggs. quite incredible really. It's not like we're the year 2024, it's like we're the year BC 2024. I mean, you imagine all those ships sailing brought the rugs, you know, in the 16, 1700s they got their foods, their tobaccos, the other things, maybe, you know, things that were a bit rarer here which we grow now, but all these things came, the rugs came, everything came. They had no computer systems where they were able to bring food here and do all that much better than they can do today. It's incredible. We just go backwards all the time. And of course they're doing all those things to us, which is the second part of the video, really. The second part of the video is uh, part of this. Because they keep doing that as well. And then saying, oh, it's this that's done it, but it's actually them that has done it. Look at all the things that we're going to be short of. And it's all the supermarkets. Come on, what the hell is going on? Let alone what the other stuff's going to do to you, which we're going to play now. This is a continue, yeah, the video is going to continue now. And this is also what they're doing because those lights are coming back. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Yet again, they're going to be doing it again and pretending that it's northern lights. Spr strong possibility you will see our aura activity again soon. NASA! predict it's the 6th of June so this is when they're going to be doing their harp testing again. I'm going to later on show you the colours so even only a couple of days ago people are seeing these lights so they're just doing it all the time. Let's just slow that down that was a bit quick so, does that look like 60 miles up to you? I mean, here is some clouds, and this is coming down to the clouds, and the clouds are only about half a mile, maybe a mile up. So it's all happening very close over your heads. Let's just move it on, I've taken some pictures. A bit more there saying that basically it's going to be Norway and Sweden but others say it's down to Mexico and that will include us because Mexico is lower down than we are. Look at it just reporting I mean look at that colour. That's what it is. That is what it is. That thing. Where is it going? Anyway, we're just going through the pictures because I took some pictures. That's what it is. Those things, how horrible. So that was in there. There you go, see? The isonosphere. Obviously, that one obviously isn't for it. It's telling us mind control and everything, and that's what they're doing. Only a hundred, they say, to 350 kilometres up, but I'm sorry, they can only make stars five miles up. So, a hundred kilometres is 60 miles, 
I reckon you can't even go that far. I reckon it's six miles. So they're doing this into this. And then, of course, it is doing all this. Protection. <laughs> Research definitely isn't that. And there you go. There it is. They're saying a hundred kilometres. A hundred kilometres is 62 miles. And where are all the lights? They say 60 miles. I don't think it's that high up. I really don't. I don't think we can go that high up. Probably just six miles, something like that. See, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Same. So they do it 100 miles up. 100 kilometres up, sorry, should I say. And the aurora lights that they're telling you, it's all the sun and everything, are 60 miles up. So whatever's happening, however high up it really is, it's still the same thing. And um, where was the bit? I saw a bit about going to Mexico. Hang on. So they're saying that these lights are going down to south as Florida and Mexico. Right. So if that's happening there, we will definitely see them. They're microwaving the atmosphere, which cannot be good for you. After this bit, I've put a video back out that I put out two weeks ago. And there's just one little discrepancy, because he says that harp isn't the same thing, but it is. So it's high frequency, which gives off heat. So just a little explanation of where it is. They're saying it's radio, so it is the towers, because it's all to do with communication. It can cause all that. So we are a frequency of five, and that thing's putting out 20,000. How can that be good for you? See, it shows microwaving just there. So we're going to see something in a minute. I was just looking at the frequencies because none of these are good for us. So it was this guy here. He was talking about Tesla's importance, wireless transmission, and then down here it's harp. So we're going to read it. Harp is the latest ionospheric modification facility. It's a heater. It's nothing more than a radio station which sends powerful, at whatever that is, television for example, blah blah blah, sends power at least 3 to 10 megahertz and sends it up to the ionosphere. What happens is it operates like a microwave oven. What happens is it operates like a microwave oven. And I've already shown you in the other bit of video earlier on, it pulses, just like the bit of video. So he says it doesn't cover this, but it does, because that's what they're doing to us. They're using the television masks to do it. They're using it at ground level to do it to us. Anyway, let's carry on with the video. Well, none of these are any good for us. I mean, look what it says radio waves, microwaves, infrared, and you've got soft x-rays, hard x-rays and gamma rays. Well, what colour do you see going on there that they're showing you is happening in the Northern Lights? That it's gamma rays, because it's pink. Pink maybe with a bit of yellow, which is still microwave. Microwave and hard x-rays are being put over your head. It's still pink, pink and blue, hard x-rays. It's even worse than microwaving. Is this seriously going to affect your body? Being around x-rays is not good. It's not radio waves, is it? And there's the microwave. Those are pink and blues. There's green in that picture there they've used. So that's infrared and UV. And obviously hard x-rays. 
Does that look 60 miles away? No, but that's green and pink. So we've got infrared and hard x-rays. I mean, none of that's good. How can that be good for you? I know that one's pink and blues, so we're into the soft x-rays, gamma rays and hard x-rays. It's even worse than microwaving, being microwaved. But that one's yellow and red, see? Microwaves. Microwaving. And to be honest, the pictures they showed you for Stonehenge was red. And red is still microwaves. And I think that's coming up in a moment, but uh, whenever you see what it is, it's them harping us and causing all these things. None of those things are good for you. Otherwise we'd be standing, you know, otherwise they wouldn't leave the room when they x-ray you. You know, all that, they have lead things on. There it is, that's one of the pictures they showed you, the Stonehenge, yellows and reds, which is microwaving. So they're doing all of the colours. Whenever you see those colours, just look at the rainbow chart. It tells you short waves, long waves, and then what they are. None of it is good for you. Document the continuing microwave pulses that we are getting hit with every day. And I'm noticing they are ramping up. On the 16th, they started at 9.11 at night until 9.11 in the morning. You see the pulse going from the east to the west coast. All right, boom, you see that? Rad stations. Each of those towers are 750 kilowatts, pumping out between 2.7 to 2.9 gigahertz in the microwave range. This is roughly the same frequency as your microwave oven, and it has the same cause and effect relationship. This was 12 hours long that they held this pulse while we slept. And look at all the other <laughs> uh, anomalies that are happening here on the screen. Look at, look at what's going on in Texas, all right? You see that big blast? Looks like a giant laser, doesn't it? Boom, see that? And then it gets obscured by the towers. Now they, they can add the Doppler towers with this. Nexrad has like 159, Doppler has 160. Now you can consider the HARP stations. Uh, there's 33 of those, but they don't show up on this satellite this covers the microwave range this is the next rad feed all right now here's where it gets worse on the 17th the next day here you go starts at 8 11 and goes until 9 11 in the morning so they increase it another hour each day so this is 13 hours we're getting hit with these frequencies all right you go to the 18th they start at 7-11 at night, going till 9-11 in the morning, increasing it to 14 hours. If you feel like hell, this is a really good reason. Look at this, man. This is insane all across the country. Look at these. Watch these towers and these stations. This is not weather. This is not rain. The light, look, oh, did you see that huge burst coming out of Nevada? Hang on, we're gonna, we're gonna stop it there, hang on. Boom, did you see that? Let's back it up here, stop it and back it up. What the hell's going on in Nevada, folks? Do you see this? <laughs> this is insane. All right, now when you see the pulse subside, all right, you see that? What is left, we're still picking up microwave radiation. These are your five, your fifth generation network stations that are all lighting up together. So you see how much radiation that is on its own? 
All right. Now we'll kick in. See the pulses from the stations? All right. You see that? How it's radiating from the central points? Those are towers, those are stations. This is not a natural anomaly. And regardless of what excuse they give us for doing this, the cause and effect relationship of being radiated with this frequency causes serious damage. This, uh, this scientific study here, PMC 7309322, if you want to look it up yourself, on the NCBI Governmental Scientific National Library of Medicine and Center for Biotechnological Information. Here you go. Could microwave irradiation cause misfolding of peptides? The answer is yes. All right. Microwaves have been experimentally shown to affect the folding dynamics of peptides and proteins. Do you understand the significance of that? Because this is the core of what causes neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, and creutzfeldt jakob disease, as well as certain cancer types. This is insane. This is, this is a scientific proof of the cause and effect relationship of what this is doing, okay? It causes cancer. This affects the hydrogen molecule. It breaks the van der Waal bonds, which is the weak electromagnetic field that holds the double strand helix together on your DNA, all right? When you break, your DNA, you get all kinds of problems, all kinds of failures. Cancer can be one of them. Neurodegenerative disorders can be another. CJD, creutzfeldt jakob disease, is also called mad cow. If you do a search, you'll find there's a lot of this coming about now. Cows are innocent, okay? <laughs> The other thing we need to talk about here is this creates massive electromagnetic fields, all right? If you took any of the injections or the medications that contain any magnetite nanoparticles such as hydroxychloroquine and such, you could be affected by this. This could cause what they call self-assembly, which is a fancy word of making the magnets stick together, okay? When they get into your bloodstream, they will eventually stick together because they're magnets, but this will force them together with the magnetic field. And this can be used as a clotting or stroking agent. Do you see where I'm going with this? This needs to be stopped. People need <laughs> to raise their voice and the awareness and say, hey, we're not gonna put up with this. There is no good that can be caused from irradiating half the country at night while they sleep. Each of these stations are 750 kilowatts. All right? <laughs> some, of these, some of these fields are larger than the state themselves. Just to put this into perspective, and they're pulsing it in synchronized bursts from east to west. Now this can be used for weather modification operations as well, but I've been watching this for years and I've never seen the pulsing like this. I've seen it starting with the eclipse and each day it's getting a little bit more. And I'm really, I'm wondering uh, how people are doing in all these areas close to these towers, how many heart attacks and strokes and other issues are happening that we're not hearing about.